So what's been done this week? Well, not as much as I'd have liked to have done, but then again, I've been enjoying myself flying. So I've been making up uh, Aileron Bell Cranks and some other little bits. I'll just show you around now. Now I've been doing some flying, as you'd have seen if you're a subscriber to my channel, looking at uh, the flying side. But uh, my lathe decided to have the motor die on it, so I had to put a new motor in. It's a bit bigger this one, I've put a one horse motor in there, which has allowed me to do some turning. And because I had the lathe being able to go, I and some metal, I've actually created some bell cranks. These are not in line with the ones on the plan. There are some modifications, I'll talk about those later. Hi and welcome to the channel. In these videos I show my build of a Fisher Youngster biplane kit and it's not meant to be instructional but it's meant for you to have a bit of entertainment seeing how I go about building this aircraft and hopefully get a few hints and tips that might help you out to build your own aircraft. Let's face it, if I can do it, you can do it. Okay, so here are the plates uh, which I've uh, cut, ready to go. I've put a master edge on one side. Uh, this is uh, eighth inch thick, 60-61 T6. Uh, so here's the piece on the plan. Uh, we've got uh, two and a half inches to the centre, two and a half inches to the centre, that's five inches half inch either side radius that's good uh, so this hole here would be uh, one and a quarter plus the half inch so one and three quarter inches up but my hole will be eight millimeters in diameter to cope with the bush i'm going to be putting in and uh, that means that up for a 2.5 d uh, edge distance going from the centre of the hole it'll be 20 millimetres from the centre of the hole to the edge there so I'm adding that into my uh, markings or will do uh, to give myself enough space to get a good edge distance so all I've done is I've marked up here half an inch drew a line right the way across uh, measured the centre line drew up the centre two and a half inches out either side and then where it crossed there and there and one and three quarter inches up from there I put a cross piece on and I've clipped it with the old center punch so uh, hopefully you can see that that's uh, that's it marked okay then so I'm just going to mark the radius uh, required for uh, Bit. I'm just going to put the mark just into the plastic coating with the dividers here so uh, this will just give me something I can see just on the plastic coating I've no mark on the metal at all and that way I'll be able to uh, draw my, uh, my lines at a tangent to these radiuses and uh, from there I'll know what I can cut away so just looking at this reflection that we've got there I can't this won't show up on the camera these lines which I've just uh, marked on the plastic what I'll do is I'll actually put some uh, ink on them and just rub it off so to speak and you'll end up with it in the in the schools there so I can see it I'll get that bit done and then this will become my master for marking out all the others so now i've got this uh, roughed out uh, so to speak uh, i now want to uh, just transfer the lines into the metal uh, to get the final size absolutely perfect so i'm just going to scribe along this is actually putting a mark into the metal I can 
there. Scribe right through the plastic. I'll now file this right down to the line all the way around and uh, carry on from there. In the vise with the file, chalk it up and drive the file. Then I'll, uh, I'll round the corners and this will be the final size and I'll be able to use this to mark up the, uh, the other three. So now that's, uh, that's roughed out, that's pretty close to the, uh, the final finish I want. Still just got to take a little bit, I haven't quite got that fed in perfectly around the corners. But that's good enough for me to use now as a template on the others and scribe close to the edge of this. And uh, then I'll file all four of them uh, together. So there's the, uh, the one, all nice and flush there, uh, gripped in position with, our, with the gripper pins. See that uh, as you tighten this, this little knurled uh, knob bit here, it pulls the whole thing together. So that's the size of the hole. That's the size of the hole. You push the thing down and then that grips it and pulls it all together and holds everything in a line. So here we are just coming <coughs> to the end of doing the rough filing. I've put uh, a blue uh, die on the side of the, the master. For the file here, because we're getting close to the finish, I'm just using a scrap piece of uh, aluminium to just make sure we've got no nubs trapped in the file. That would spoil the finish. So just by going down the, the teeth like that, that, that helps to clean it out. Bit of chalk. And hopefully, nice long straight. Shouldn't be too long before we get that bit. It's just starting to touch there. Nope. I'm just pushing the file in one direction uh, in contact lifting it off if you if you do the backwards and forwards bit like that you tend to uh, heat up the, the surface of the aluminium slightly and you end up with more sort of nubs being trapped in the file also if you're working on harder metals like steel and things like that you'll uh, blunt your file a lot faster Needs a bit more at this end. So, just about there. Right, I just now want to take it down a bit further, so I'm going to use uh, a finer file. This is a mill cut file. So we get a, we'll get a better finish with this. Hopefully get rid of those teeth marks. Not much pressure. Just, just some work. And we can see how we're doing by doing some draw filing, which gives us the sort of final file finish. too bad just a little bit just needed down this end here and then uh, just target that a little bit pretty much done just go round off these corners and then that finish there will uh, will improve 
after we've done the, the, the drilling and uh, I'll do the, the edge polishing before we separate all the plates. Well, <coughs> bad planning, I have to admit. Uh, camera battery went flat, so I spent a lot of time talking to myself. Nothing unusual there. Uh, and demonstrating to a dead camera. Uh, the state we're at, as I said, I was going to drill and ream these holes. So with it, all the uh, grip pins holding it together, drilled one hole, 4.5 millimetres, reamed it to 3 16th, put a bolt in, did the other one, same, same manner, 4.5, reamed, bolt in, and then this one, 7.5 millimetres and ream to 8 to take bushes. Now, uh, as you've seen at the beginning of the, uh, the video, I said that uh, I have done my own take on things. So I've been on the lathe while the camera was charging and doing a little bit of work. Nothing too fantastic. Uh, so I've made up two spacer pieces out of uh, T, uh, sorry, 6082T6. Uh, they'll hold the plates apart rather than using the wood as is on the plans. And then the reason these were opened up to uh, eight millimeters, uh, also as I discussed about the fact I had to increase the uh, the allowance for the uh, edge allowance is these bushes will go through. Now uh, this is uh, reamed to eight millimeters. These have been machined, so they're just slightly over eight there. If I mark, when I mark them up uh, and I did the machining, I machined these to 8.03 millimeters. So they've got a slight interference fit with the aluminium there and with the bushes here. And uh, You'll see on the final assembly what it all looks like and I'll explain the reasons why I've gone for this slight change. The original design is perfectly adequate. It's just, as you've probably come to find, I like to do things just that little bit differently. So now that this is all done, Just I'll just take these uh, bolts out. These are just temporary. And we can strip the plastic sheeting off and just deburr the edges because these will have a, a really sharp edge on them now so just separate that's our master one and so you tend to get a, a little bit of a, a burr going It's amazing how tightly that burr will grip things. There we go. So my usual method now is I peel the, the sheeting off. We can get hold of it. Then I use uh, one of these blades. I just run that along the edge. And then small amounts of uh, 600 wet and dry. I just polish, do a sort of final bit of a polish on that edge. All the way around. Uh, 
and then just using a deburring tool very lightly around the holes remember we're just trying to take the burr off we're not countersinking it so it should be very little pressure needed and that's one done ready to go and then that's going to be uh, washed down with uh, methanol uh, to clean it and uh, it's it's ready to go uh, be uh, etch primed and painted and then I'll assemble this one's got just a couple of little marks on here it'll need to be deburred as well but on these uh, front front face where it's got a little scratch I'll just go through with very lightly there with uh, 600 grit to get rid of those scratches and then uh, I can polish that off with uh, so we've got next to nothing and that's with uh, fine scotch bright to get rid of any of the the, the, the surface scratches slight marks there from the uh, the gripper pins and stuff like that so I'll do the same to all four plates I'll get them all painted up the last part that you saw is all this little lot all in bare metal uh, uh, used etch primer and painted these up with uh, aircraft grade uh, zinc paint uh, and then assembled it these bushes which I made up on the lathe uh, they're aircraft grade uh, bearing bronze have been pressed in holding it all together but with these uh, bolts into position to keep everything aligned and this is one of the, the modifications which I've done the original is perfectly adequate but on the original you had a wood spacer in here and this would have rotated around a pin or a tube uh, on the bare aluminium I wanted to make it so it had a little bit longer life about it and I wanted to face here which uh, was raised slightly so a wash can go on here and we've got separation between this and the wooden block uh, that it sits on that way there's less chance of this rocking out of position and chafing on anything causing any control binding uh, and also uh, on the actual plans uh, the operation for the bell crank is with tubes going directly into here with bolts pivoting uh, you know, act, acting as a pivot on the tube and that can rock slightly because of the angles at which it's set so I've gone for these uh, rose joints uh, at the ends here and the control rods will go directly onto onto here I'll make threaded inserts to go inside the control rods to go onto here and uh, that way there's no play there's no chance of this moving in any format and this can articulate these can articulate sideways as you can see there as well as rotate and they're sealed bearings so there should be no wear or very little wear and in here no lubrication will be needed because of the phosphor bronze so there's no chance of having uh, dust or dirt going in there to create wear and uh, any lubrication from getting from this onto the woodwork to cause uh, contamination or weakening of the wood so that is what I've done this week doesn't look like a lot uh, this is uh, two and three quarter hours worth of work to make up the pair uh, and the actual weight increase is quite minimal actually uh, looking at the the weight of the plates and then how much has been added by using a metal spacer in here uh, and the bushes and the fact that I increased that edge uh, allowance for the larger hole as I said the original will work perfectly well this is just my particular take on things and you'll see this all the way through I tend to uh, look at trying to make uh, the item just a little bit more in line with production aircraft uh, rather than just the straightforward home build these bolts of course here are temporary at the moment just holding this in place while it was uh, while I was pressing it and uh, they will be changed out for 
uh, AGS or AN style uh, bolts and castellated nuts to go through with split pins because I don't like nylocks being used on anything where there's any rotary forces going on. Possibly over the next week I might make up the blocks top and bottom and the pivots to go through uh, here so it's all ready to glue onto the spars once I get the kit actually arrives here in jolly old England. Bye now. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up. You can subscribe or even hit the little bell notification for future videos. Any comments would be appreciated and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Remember, go fly and feel the sky.